Hi Jasmine and Kaden. I'm gonna make a video for you today out of a book called <laughs> Big Questions. Big Questions from Little People and Simple Answers from Great Minds. I got this book at the New York Public Library Bookstore in Manhattan the other day. Jordan, you'll remember that we went there together back with Farland Fish in 2007. I really wanted to get a book from there to read with Jas for Jasmine and Caden. So I'm just going to start with the introduction today and we'll get on with some more questions in another video. Today, you might notice that it's really wobbly here in this boat. That's because there's big wind and waves outside. Adam and I are just hanging out in the boat for a second day in a row without going to shore and without sailing anywhere because there's big waves and big wind. So I'm going to read the introduction and then post this video for you. Editor's note. My son is two years old and already the questions have started. Recently he pointed at the moon as we hurried home from nursery and asked, what that? For now, that's the moon, will do as an answer. But I know it won't be long before I'm struggling to explain what the moon is made of, how far away it is, and whether a goldfish could survive there. The questions children ask are often baffling. Chances are, if you ever knew the answer, or even part of the answer, you've probably forgotten it, or can only remember a half-baked version of the truth. Imagine if you could turn into a well-known expert at this point and get them to answer for you, in language simple enough for a child to understand. This was the idea behind big questions. With the help of 10 elementary schools, we asked thousands of kids between the ages of 4 and 12 to send us the questions they most wanted answered. The results were fascinating and funny. There were cute and quirky questions like, why is space so sparkly? Who had the first pet? And can a bee sting a bee? Others were fiendishly difficult. How is electricity made? Or where do oceans come from? And hold on, I have to turn the page. A few shot straight to the heart of the deep philosophical conundrum. Why do we have wars? How do we fall in love? And where does good come from? Among their handwritten replies, we found a lot of questions involving bodily functions. Why is we yellow? Seemed to be a recurring concern. The mysteries of space clearly obsessed many children, and it's no surprise that animals, chickens, cows, and monkeys popped up frequently. There was even one question of great genius that encapsulated all the above, a perfect storm of cows, bowels, I'm sorry, cows, bowels and space travel. If a cow didn't fart for a year and then did one big fart, would it fly into space? What would experts say when faced with these questions? The response from our panel has been staggering and heartwarming. However busy they've carved out time to continue to co-write this book in order to benefit the NSPCC, the UK's leading child protection charity. Bear Grylls took the trouble to explain the nutritious benefits of eating a worm. Jessica Ennis emailed a mantra for aspiring Olympians just two months before the 2012 Games. Darren Brown set his impressive gray matter to work on, is the human brain the most powerful thing on earth? While Philip well, Philippa Gregory put her latest novel on hold to shed light on why Guy Fox was so naughty. No question was too bizarre. The historian Bettany Hughes barely blinked when we asked her, did Alexander the Great like frogs? This book doesn't claim to offer the only answers to these questions. It's an anthology of voices, a personal response from each expert to a child's idiosyncratic question. We hope you enjoy reading them with your family and take something from them, including the mental image of a cow soaring into the stratosphere powered by its own methane. Thanks to the science writer Mary Roach and her friend Ray, a real life rocket scientist for running the maths on that one. When my son asked his questions about the moon that, if, that evening, I was making a mental list of what we had in the fridge for dinner. Lying back in his buggy, he was 
taking in the beauty of the night sky. There above, he saw a pale and ghostly globe shining in the darkness for the very first time. His question, what that? Demanded I see that full moon too. So we stopped and stared, and how strange and new it seemed to us both. Gemma Elwin Harris. Gemma is the one that puts this book together for us. So, hi Jasmine, hi Kaden, maybe hi Julius. See, this is what Julius's dad, Adam, made for me and my Adam. And this is my buddy Kwa, and here's Larry and Bernie, and this is where we're gonna read stories to you, more answers to questions from this book. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.